tank curfew begins in Pune even as the caseload breaches the 10,800 mark. Maharashtra reports nearly 50,000 daily cases, 227 deaths. Mumbai reports over 9,000 coronavirus cases in a day for the first time. In the battle of the big wigs, Prime Minister Modi and the Bengal Chief Minister hit out at each other with a Jai Shri Ram taunt. Prime Minister Modi welcomes Mamta Banerjee to Varanasi. Mamta Banerjee calls the BJP outsider gundas. UP files anti-terror charge sheet against the Kerala journalist covering the Hathras rape. Kapan was arrested last year while on his way to UP's Hathras to cover the rape and murder case. There will be no reduction in the syllabus of classes 9 to 12 for the academic year 2021-22. No reduction in the course load of students amidst a COVID-19 pandemic. And with six days to go for the Indian Premier League at the Wankhade Stadium, ground staff test positive for the coronavirus. Checks have been tightened. Hello and welcome. You're watching NDTV, the top story. Mumbai has now reported more than 9,000 daily coronavirus cases, which is the Maharashtra capital's highest ever single-day spike. It has also logged 27 deaths in the last 24 hours. According to Mumbai's municipal body, the BMC, 9,090 people have tested positive for the virus in the last 24 hours. Meanwhile, Maharashtra, which is the worst hit state in the country, has reported 49,447 coronavirus cases, 277 deaths in a day. This is Maharashtra's highest ever single day figure. And Pune on Saturday reported a record breaking 10,873 cases and 52 deaths. And the 12 hour night curfew, the Maharashtra government's response to the alarming spike in COVID cases is underway. The 12 hour night curfew began at 6 p.m. and will be in place for a period of at least one week. In Maharashtra, Pune has been recording the highest number of cases for the last few days. If you look at the figures, there is 10,873 cases that has been recorded today. Yesterday, more than 9,000 cases were recorded. On Thursday, I can uh, tell you around 8,025 cases were recorded. On Wednesday, 8,553 cases were recorded. So we can see that there has been a rise in the number of cases every day. And that's the reason that a review meeting was uh, uh, happened yesterday. And the Deputy Chief Minister uh, Ajit Pawar's uh, leadership after which uh, these new rules have been brought out, which is also called as a mini lockdown. Now, even now, if you look at these uh, streets, you could see uh, uh, that uh, there is a curfew at place. These uh, types of images we used to see last year when uh, a complete lockdown was announced by the central government. Now, similar images are being seen at least in Pune. There are few people belong, uh, belonging to the essential services that are allowed on the roads. There are police barricades across the district. The police is uh, ensuring that there is no rush or the rules are being followed because uh, there are strict orders that if the rules are not being followed, there will be action taken against them. Now, uh, throughout the day, I can tell you that at least on the first day of the mini lockdown, people were following the rules. There were less traffic on the road. Uh, we went to the vegetable market in the morning. The number of people over there were very few. Even uh, the uh, temples as well as other religious places are closed throughout the day. We tried to go to a restaurant because as of now, the hotels, bar, restaurants, everything are closed. They have been asked to only deliver and you can't sit over there because we have been trying uh, throughout the day that at least there will be some place where we can go. But it didn't happen. So at least on the first day, uh, we can say that the Pune is ensuring, the people of Pune are following the rules and even the police officials and other officials are ensuring that the rules are being followed. Now remember that there is PM, PML. Uh, this is uh, the... Uh, what we can say is uh, the bus that uh, runs over here, there are 1700 of such buses, <coughs> they are being closed for 7 days as well and even now if you could see uh, the uh, shops are closed, the roads are closed, so at least on the first day what we can say is that people have been following the rules but will they be following it in the coming 6 days as well and will this bring a uh, fall in the number of cases that are being recorded every day, that would be an important thing to watch. And anticipating an alarming splurge in cases, it is a race against time to build up COVID care infrastructure in the state of Maharashtra. 
where once cars used to be parked, COVID beds have been set up for patients. A 10-story parking plaza in Thane, adjoining Mumbai, has now become a dedicated COVID center. The parking plaza is about 1150 capacity. In the first stage, अभी 400 का 400 बेड ऑपरेट कर रहे हैं अभी हालांकि वो शुरू भी हो गया है उसमें 50 के आसपास आईसीयू बेड्स हैं बाकी के ऑक्सीजन बेड्स हैं तो ये कैपेसिटी हमने अभी शुरू की है इमरजेंसी स्टेप्स बीइंग टेकन गिवन द राइजिंग नंबर ऑफ कोरोना वायरस केसेस इन नवी मुंबई एज वेल द सेवन स्टोरी जय बजरंग बली हाउसिंग सोसाइटी इन धारवी इज बीइंग कन्वर्टेड इनटू अ कोविड सेंटर एंड इट्स अ रेस अगेंस्ट टाइम अंतर नियमानुसार अपन चलो तर माना एक मध्या पीरियड में दे दारावी सार क्या ठीक आन ची कि वह वर्वी अंधेरी इकर चा अपन बर्याप शून्या वर्ती रुग्ना संख्या नहीं ली लिए मुझे है ही करुण दाखो ली ले महाराष्ट्रास कोविड केसेस कंटिन्यू टू सर्च येट क्राउड स्वॉम मार्केट्स एंड पब्लिक स्पेसेस एंड द Anil Shukla from Thane, Suresh Das from Navi Mumbai and Pooja Bharadwaj from Mumbai. And frontline and healthcare workers can no longer register for COVID-19 vaccinations. The health ministry has announced on Saturday it has said that the move is to ensure vaccine coverage expands quickly to include more categories of people such as those above 45 as frontline and healthcare workers have already got enough priority and enough time to get vaccination. In fact, now the ministry says that some ineligible beneficiaries in these categories have been found adding their names and getting vaccinated in violation of the guidelines. In time now for all the election news, the high octane campaign continues in West Bengal with both Prime Minister Modi and the Chief Minister addressing a series of rallies in the state on Saturday and each taking the other on directly. The weapon of choice being bandied back and forth, the outsider tag with Mamta Banerjee trying to make it stick and Prime Minister Modi using his Lok Sabha constituency Varanasi to make it ricochet back to the Chief Minister. Alamar Hindu bhai bono dheer kachho ami bolvo. Vijay Pichay diya se bole. Hindu Muslim asun, Hindu rabi uddhya bhod din. Ekta usun menna. Shab kota gunda bhai dheer te kya asche. Shab kota gunda, bohira gato gunda. Aapnara janen nondi gamae ki kore chhe. Gamae gamae ghiye bole chhe Vijay Pichay. Tumar meke loot kore niye jabo. Tumar baccha ke kidnap kore niye jabo. Ekta bol, tar husband ke amon mene chhe. शे शाड़ी राचोल नहीं आम के बोल चे दीदी आम शाड़ी आमर पान बिक्का दाव इरा आम दे मेरे भेल बे बाई दे बिहार ते केस चे उत्तर प्रदेश ते केस चे गुंडा गुलो के सब पार्टी दिए चे पोस्टिंग बंगला है आगा मेरे इंजन शांति ते थकते होए भालो थकते होए और बीजेपी जो गुंडा देर भोट दे बन्ना सब बाई देर हो सकता है उसके कारण आपका मन जरा वाराणसी की तरफ मुड़ गया हो मेरे बनारस के लोग मेरी काशी के लोग यूपी के लोग इतने बड़े दिल वाले हैं इतने बड़े दिल वाले हैं कि आपको बाहरी नहीं कहेंगे आपको टूरिस्ट नहीं कहेंगे आपको टूरिस्ट गैंग भी नहीं कहेंगे मेरी काशी के लोगों का दिल भी बंगाल के लोगों की तरह बहुत विशाल है and in Tamil Nadu, the tag the BJP is trying to make stick is of corruption and dynasty but the man at whom the crown prince slurs are targeted at seems nonplussed Udhaynidhi Stalin, the son of party boss M.K. Stalin, is projecting himself as a leader who can challenge the BJP-led center. And Friday's contentious IT raids on Stalin's daughter's home came after Udhaynidhi questioned what he called the exponential rise in wealth of the union home minister Amit Shah's son, Jay Shah. Udhaynidhi Stalin has now thanked the BJP for, as he puts it, giving the DMP, DMK good publicity ahead of next week's election. Being 
called the Crown Prince of the DMK, Udayniti Stalin, the son of BMK Chief MK Stalin, contest from the Chepak Thiruvallikeni Assembly constituency, making his electoral debut from the seat which was earlier also represented by his late grandfather Karunanadi. DMK will win. You will win a major, thumping majority. If you are targeting the Prime Minister and Mr. Amit Shah specifically, any particular reason for no, They targeted me, so it's, I have to target them. And, and how would you react to the criticism that you are part of the domestic politics just because you are son of Mr. Stalin? Let the, let the people of Chepak Trivili can decide that. With about a dozen films under his belt, 43-year-old actor, producer, and distributor Uday Nidhi Stalin was catapulted to an active role in DMK as a star campaigner ahead of 2019 Lok Sabha polls the party swept. Soon he was made the youth wing secretary as a reward, a position his DMK chief father MK Stalin held earlier. This time too as a star campaigner he has superseded many veterans. <laughs> நான் உள்ள நுழையும் போது கூட அரசியல் நுழையும் போது அரசியல் இருந்தப்போ கூட இதே தான் சொல்லிட்டு இருந்தாங்க இது நாங்களாம் அரசியலில் நுழையில் அரசியலில் பிறந்திருக்கிறோம் நானாகட்டும் உதயனாகட்டும் அரசியலில் பிறந்து அப்படியே ஐக்கியமாய் வந்திருக்கிறோம் அதை எப்படி இப்போ சொல்ல முடியும் அவருடைய அவருடைய திறமையை பொறுத்து இருக்கு அவருடைய இதை பொறுத்து இருக்கு he increased youth enrollment by 24 lakh on a single drive. He also appointed more than 3 lakh new youth functionaries for greater participation, which would also ensure massive crowds at his rallies. However, this has given ammunition to the opposition and a war of words. The young crown prince of BMK, who is sidelined, Many senior DMK leaders. If Udayanidhi wins, he will be the sixth lawmaker from the Karunanidhi family over the years. Call it dynastic politics, democracy or otherwise. Yet another rising sun is getting ready to make a splash in Tamil Nadu politics. In Chennai with Shah Vijay and Suresh, Sam Daniel, Find the TV. And Prime Minister Modi was in Assam again, this time to campaign in uh, Borderland Tamilpur, where the battle for Borderland is expected to be the most intense in the third phase. Here's a report. The Prime Minister acknowledging at Tamilpur, a constituency in the Borderland region, that the battle for the Borderland seats will be the most intense among the 40 seats of Lower Assam that go to polls in the third phase on 6th of April. The Congress-led Mahajot has a clear edge in this phase. BJP is banking on a repeat of last year's Borderland polls when they dumped ally BPF and went solo and formed the Border Council with the UPPL. No, there is no any close, uh, you know, the battle. It's very clear that we are going to get, gain the mandate of the people of Assam. Pramod Bodo supporters, mostly Bodos, say they had once voted for BPF, fed up with corruption. Thus, UPPL is the alternative. When you have public vote, you have to work with the public vote. But the public vote has been working with the public vote. In the two or three months, you have to work with the public vote. We have to work with the public vote. Borderland's unique demography, over 30% of voters are Bodos, nearly 70% are non-Bodos, of them 40% are Muslims, pose a unique challenge. The Congress and Ajmal hope joining forces with Hagrama Mohilari's BPF will be the turning point. In 2016, BPF won all the 12 seats in Borderland. Four of them have polled in second phase already. This bar will top by election. BCP ka saath aur UPP ka saath hamara direct fight hoga. BPF ne BTC ka 12 seat pura aajayega. UPP ka ek bhi nahi milega. BJP bhi ek bhi nahi milega. There is an intense political battle at hand in the borderland region where 
Hakrama Mohilari, his party BPF, is now part of Mahajor and is challenging BJP and its newfound ally, the UPPL. Hagrama Mohilari is seen as the kingmaker in Assam politics since the alliance with which he merged always goes on to form government in Assam. And with BJP star campaigner Himanta Bishwa Sharma barred from campaigning, the Mahajor would be hoping that Hagrama Mohilari once again emerges as the kingmaker. In Bijni, with campus and Sanjay Chakravarti, Ratnip Chaudhary, Findy TV. And after the break, why there will be no reduction in the syllabus of class uh, 9 to 12 for this year? A special report. Now from around the country in a 5,000 page chart sheet has been filed by the Uttar Pradesh police against the Kerala journalist Siddhi Kappan who was arrested in October last year while travelling from Delhi to report on the aftermath of the alleged gang rape and subsequent death in a Delhi hospital of a Dalit woman from UP's Hathras. Mr. Kappan and three others were heading to Hathras to report on this uh, story uh, of this woman who then died in hospital when they were arrested and charged under the anti-terror law. And the CBSE has announced uh, the new syllabus for classes 9 to 12 for the academic year 2021 and there's going to be no reduction in the cost load of students amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. We got some reactions. 16-year-old Bhushan and his sister, 15-year-old Renuka, live in this one-room house in Delhi's Trilokpuri area. They are among the thousands of students across India who have not gone to school for the last one year and have had to depend on online classes. CBSE's decision to retain the 100% syllabus for classes 9 to 12 for this session, unlike a 30% reduction last year, has come as a blow to them. In their case, the challenge is bigger. They get access to online classes only in the evening on the only phone in the family when their father comes back from work. With a family income of around 15,000 rupees, their parents cannot afford another smartphone. So live classes are going on at 9 o'clock in the morning, because my father is going to get out of the morning at 8 o'clock. So when live classes are going on, then the teacher and the child are available. So at that time, the child and the teacher ask questions about what is going on in the classes, what is the question, what is the answer, what is the answer, what is the answer. According to the new syllabus released by CBSE, the chapters that were slashed in the last academic year have been restored in the official curriculum, for the upcoming academic session 2021-22. CBSE had announced last year that it was a one-time initiative as teaching and learning through online mediums was fairly new at the time. CBSE had dropped chapters on democracy and diversity, demonetization, nationalism, secularism, India's relations with its neighbors and growth of local governments in the country among others. The choice of chapters had drawn criticism from opposition political parties and academicians who had claimed that the move was ideologically driven, while several students and parents had welcomed it as a relief. 15-year-old Akshat lives in a posh residential society in Noida. He has all the resources he needs, but for him too, online classes have their limitations. I was pretty hopeful that syllabus like for this year should be reduced because intent as everybody knows we have to give boards and for us it's the first time and last year despite the syllabus being reduced we had some difficult times you know like coping up it's very easy in online sessions to get distracted because who the teacher won't know if you can just you, you can like open a new tab watch youtube you can watch netflix yeah especially maths because you know like when the maths teacher is right in front of you he could like tell he or she could tell by your expressions like if you're grasping the concept or if you're not grasping the concept see last year uh, it just went for them to adjust to the whole online uh, thing that been introduced in the education system but this time and I have seen that they they are struggling a lot the concentration is not there at least 20 to 25 percent should be there because uh, 
uh, if there are so many changes happening already, why can't they consider it this change as well? Schools have not opened for more than a year and given the rise in COVID cases, they are unlikely to open anytime soon. With online classes set to continue, it might not be easy for students to cover the usual syllabus. In New Delhi with camera person Gauri Prasad, this is Sukirti Duvedi for NDTV. And finally, with seven days to go for the high-octane Indian Premier League clash between the Chennai Super Kings and the Delhi Capitals at the Wankade Stadium, ground staff have tested positive for the coronavirus at the stadium. Six members of the event management team of the IPL test uh, of the IPL have tested positive for COVID. And with cases rising in the state of Maharashtra, IPL franchises have started feeling a little wary. And that's the news at this hour. Stay tuned to NDTV for constant updates. Bye-bye.